After an extended week off of no videos, I'm back with part four, baby. A little bro talk, Q&A. You ask the questions on that one video I made, and I'll try to answer all of them to the best of my abilities. So, if I believe correctly, remember correctly, uh, this is the next question that was the most popular on that video. And it's from a vegan brain. Okay, it says, I remember you said that novices can follow Bulgarian style training and be fine with two movements. If I do, let's say, behind the back deadlifts and bench press, shouldn't I also do another movement for shoulder health? Like for example, band pull-aparts. Would you recommend something like that? And if yes, how many sets and reps? And also, how often? Thanks for your time. All right, bro. If you want, this, I mean, I've done stuff like that before too, in terms of like reverse flies or band pull aparts. That stuff's so easy to incorporate like in between sets because it's not really gonna take up any energy whatsoever. It's great to do, but at the same time, if you don't do it, wow, it's hot out here. At the same time, if you don't do it, it's not that big of a deal because here's the deal, man. The deal is that when you focus on one, two, maybe three movements, remember, it's it's only for a couple weeks. It's only until you plateau and then you change movements up. So I've done that same same focus. Behind the back deadlifts, oh yeah, I used to do those all the time for years. And bench press. Um, like your traps, your lats are gonna get really hard, uh, hit hard, your rhomboids are gonna get really hard, hit hard, just from being like stretched out like crazy. Uh, now, yes, your rear delts probably won't, they're not going to get really a ton of stimulus whatsoever, but the fact is that after this training cycle, you can move on and then you should focus on a pull in terms of like something that's going to have like elbow flexion. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, for instance, bench press behind the back deadlifts, then afterwards you can change it up to T-bar rows. T-bar rows and uh, like a Jefferson deadlift or whatever your goals are. You know what I mean? The, the biggest thing is, I've addressed this before, don't get so caught up on, well, I gotta work every single muscle group in my training cycles because it's all short term, all right? That's, that's that, but remember, like I said, I've also done it where, yeah, I mean, if I focus on just a deadlift, then it, yes, it doesn't have to be so so critical what you do and what you don't do. If you want to throw some band pull-aparts in there, by all means. It's, uh, for a while there, I was doing those in between every single set of bench press and all of my free time too. That's not gonna kill your recovery by any means. The super high rep stuff is not gonna kill your recovery at all. Um, and that leads into the next question. Good Lord, what a motorcycle, what horsepower uh, from right out here. D Trev, you noted the difference between chimpanzees and humans and strength and what we should do for ultimate strength gains. But what should we do for hypertrophy gains? Okay, so that's a great question from what I was just talking about. Because uh, from what I've noticed, guys, uh, remember this is for newer lifters too. Focus on the strength gains and the muscle gains will come with it until a certain point. Right, then you're gonna continue getting stronger, but you're not really gonna put any extra size on. What I found that works really well from previously in my training, and now I'm starting to do this stuff again, I'm, trying to, I'm starting to incorporate it, and I feel like it's going really well, is insanely high rep stuff, like with bands at the end of training or in between sets, okay? I really, really think that that's a great way, great way to induce additional hypertrophy on top of like your strength training. So, my point being is focus on the strength, okay? I really, really think that, I wouldn't call it Bulgarian because it's not Bulgarian. It's kind of Bulgarian, but it's my own twist on it, all right? Because remember, Bulgarian's just going for a daily max, whereas my plan is, right, you're, you're always going for it. Uh, a grand total max and then once if you don't hit that and you plateau after a couple of days you switch movements completely whereas Bulgarians like for the most part traditional Bulgarian is you're working on your clean you're working on your snatch and you're just doing daily maxes and getting more efficient with those particular movements and never really stopping those movements or maybe doing variations of them but you know 
my twist is on different deadlift variations, squatting variations, single leg variations, pressing variations, pulling, whatever. But uh, I, I really think that that works incredibly well. And then just doing very high rep stuff. So like what I've been doing lately, and I feel like my arms are looking bigger and more defined in terms of my triceps, is uh, just like banded push downs, tricep push downs, sets of, you know, three sets of 50. It's great. And it doesn't, it doesn't hinder my recovery at all for the big movements, the taxing compound movements. Uh, the first time I did it, I was super sore, but I've continued to do it every day and there's just no soreness. You adapt very quickly to it. So that's what I would say, D Trev, baby bro, is uh, just do that, incorporate that within the, the heavy, the focus on the heavy compound movements for you know sets of one to three, whatever, and then throw some banded stuff in sets of 50 just to get the the extremes of both ends of the spectrum just my take okay it is so bright out here you can hardly see the screen tanu when did you start doing bulgarian and why did you start doing it okay i would say it was uh a few years back um you know i've told you guys many times now I started lifting when I was 11 years old, I'm 29 years old now. So I've been lifting for 18 years. For the first 12 years of my lifting career, I did a lot of uh, splits, basically bro split style bodybuilder training. And when I was in college, I was doing that like with my buddies when I was going to the gym. But then I also, I was an athlete, so I was doing really what we were doing athletically was the upper body lower body split and with every athletic program I've been involved in involved in that's usually what they do they split it up just upper lower so I think if you're an athlete like that's that's a great way to go but that's besides the point the point is when did I start doing Bulgarian so I was doing the bodybuilder stuff along with the training I was doing for my college program and uh, I decided to get really invested with a home gym. And I started doing deadlifting stuff, rack pulls, a lot of bench pressing. Um, and because I had that stuff available, I was like, well, I'll just, I'll just do it. You know, like there's, I don't have a million machines here. So I just stuck with those basic compound movements. And I was doing more kettlebell stuff like swings. And that's how I learned about uh, Pavel and uh, got his Naked Warrior book, Empowered to the People, I believe it was and learned about Grease in the Groove, and it just really took off from there. So the whole Grease in the Groove thing is, for instance, he, I think he revolved his book around the pull-ups. Um, anytime you walk under a pull-up bar, just bang out a couple pull-ups, don't fail with it, right? You're just greasing the motion, you're becoming more efficient at it. So I believe it was, if you could do 10 pull-ups, every time you're under a pull-up bar, just do five pull-ups, right? Never pushing it to failure, but just getting overall more volume in. So that's basically where I was like, well, yeah, I mean, Okay, that works with pull-ups uh, and he said you could do that with any exercise really like if it's more technical it's gonna work better so then I started doing that with like what was the first movement I think I started doing that with probably rack pulls I think not high rack pulls below the knee rack pulls just because I had a my first home gym I had a squat rack like in a library room basically like an office so I didn't have a ton of space I just had the squat rack with the bar on the rack so below below the knee rack pulls and um, the more I did it, obviously, the more I adapted to it and wasn't really getting sore from it and made very quick strength gains with it. Um, but it didn't take a while until, or it wasn't like right away that I started training the same movements every single day like I've been doing. You know, it was a slow progression. And it wasn't until the behind the back deadlifts, I believe four years ago or something, I was like, man, I'm really, this movement feels very good to me. And I was focusing so much on like deficit deadlifts and just conventional deadlifts and just being fried. I wanted to do those more often because th that was really what I was focused on, I was getting really good at them. Uh, but I just couldn't progress with those and it's every day. As you guys know, they just destroy your lower back. Doesn't matter how good your form is, like it's just way too hard to recover from to do on like a daily basis. Um, but I really enjoyed doing behind the back deadlifts and they felt really good. 
and I found that I could recover from those. Like my lower back wasn't shot whatsoever. You know, it was more of my upper back. It was nice and toasty from doing them, but I could come back in the next day and that soreness didn't matter and I could lift more weight with it. So I started doing those every day and it, I basically just was sick of everything I was doing. I just wanted to try something different. So that's why I did it. And it's the best way to make very fast strength gains. As I've said in previous videos though, the strength gains don't stay forever. You'll lose them, but they come back. You just gotta work back up to it. Next question. If I get my weighted pull up to your strength of 120, will I be jacked like you, wide back and biceps? No. No. All right, I've been lifting for 18 years. There's more to it than just the strength itself. A big part of it is the diet. That's why when people always ask me, like, oh, how do I gain weight? It's, it's not just like, oh, just get really good at this one movement. That's not going to get you, you know, being wide, thick, right? It's a combination of things. So, like, do you really think the pull-ups are what got me in my back? No. See, when I was a kid, 11, 12, 13, I did a ton of pull-ups. And I had pretty wide lats. But then again, I mean, I was a very skinny kid, so... How wide were they in reality? I don't. They probably weren't very impressive whatsoever. I mean, I was 100, 100 pounds at the time, 100, 100 pounds, 120 pounds. Um, I mean, if, remember a lot of it's genetic genetics in terms of like how your back's gonna look, like your lats and your traps and stuff. Like I work my traps to death, and it's not like they're just incredibly impressive, but I have pretty pretty wide lats. That's just the insertions, whatever. Um, but honestly, if you want the best gains for your back, I wouldn't just do pull-ups. You got to do all, all the deadlift variations. I think that's what's going to give you the most impressive back. That's why I really enjoy doing all the variations because they're all different. They all hit you from different angles. It's no different than any other, you know, bodybuilder methodology that, you know, hit your chest from a million different angles. Uh, does it really affect the size and the thickness, I mean, who knows, but it's a fun way to consistently hit your back. That's why I like doing all the different variations because like Jefferson deadlifts, you'll find that they'll smash your lats. Behind the back deadlifts, you'll find that they just crush like your mid, low traps. Um, rack pulls above the knee, upper traps, they'll hit those very hard. Same thing with trap bar deadlifts, you'll find that those hit your upper traps very hard. So it's just a combination of doing all those things. That's the stuff that you really should do if you want to develop your back. Uh, T-bar rows are awesome as well. Not to say that pull-ups aren't good, they, they absolutely are, but they're not gonna give you an insanely impressive back. Tons of people do pull-ups and not everyone has you know super thick, wide back. Did you ever think about pursuing a career in MMA after you finished wrestling in college? Yeah, I did. But at that point, you know, I was just kind of, uh, I was just kind of done, just burnt out with competing and training and, you know, having that pressure. When you compete, there's, uh, or like when you're in season and when you train so hard, there's always so much pressure on and it causes so much stress. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys that have wrestled in high school, wrestled in college or played any sports, like when you finish your season, you know, no matter how you do, like it's just this, just this weight lifted off your shoulders, and you just feel so free, and you feel so good. And then the season comes back up, and you train so hard for it, and it's just this, this crushing pressure that you feel constantly. Um, so after competing for 14 years, 13, 14 years, you know, I just wanted a break from it, basically, and I just didn't want to have to learn a whole new set of skills in terms of jujitsu and Muay Thai and all that stuff. It's not to say I wouldn't have enjoyed it, but I just I just wanted to be done with it all, and I just wanted to focus on lifting, and I because I really enjoyed lifting and just strength training. So that's basically you know that's basically why I didn't pursue wrestling any further, and not at MMA either. Um, but now I'm learning a whole new set of skills again, but it's different. So we'll see. Um, let's see, going on 15 minutes. So yep, we'll save it for another Q and A. Part four in the books.